When I first arrived in Thailand over a decade ago, I was relatively new to the watch world. I discovered the watch community there, and it became a small part of why I stayed for so long. But the warm culture, the natural beauty, constantly learning new things, and the risks I took, those are the real reasons. Bitter, I ate a spider. Being back in the kingdom and meeting collectors like Kun M and Andy gave me the same sense of horological discovery that I had all those years ago. And even though I came to know Thailand well over my time there, I only scratched the surface. This time around reminded me that there's always more to uncover. Welcome to a box factory on the outskirts of Bangkok. Thousands of boxes for brands around the globe are made here on a daily basis. You have your factory workers, your raw materials, and your machines. But this is no ordinary factory. Inside is a full-fledged museum dedicated to Omega. It's aptly named the Omega Passion Museum. And the man behind it is Kun Abichai Chinsetawong. I could call him a passionate Omega collector, but that would be drastically selling him short. Before I head back to the States, one thing I couldn't pass up was the opportunity to see Abichai's collection in person. And that meant making a trip to a box factory, also the Omega Passion Museum. You'll see. Omega is one of the best-selling watch brands globally and has a massive fan base, myself included. I've been through a few Speedies, Flightmasters, and Seamasters. In fact, the Bond Seamaster was my first high-end watch. When it comes to Omega's design, movement innovation, and history, there's just so much to dig into. For over 25 years, Kun Apichai has been collecting not only Omega watches, but all sorts of Omega historical odds and ends. Kun Apichai. Firstly, I want to thank you for inviting me into what is essentially the Omega Passion Museum of Thailand, but it doubles as your office inside of a factory. Yeah. Where did this idea come from? It's, it's incredible. I start collecting watches, and one day I just think, after getting more and more, why don't I put it somewhere and I can enjoy it every day. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that it would be hard not to be distracted by all the watches. Mm -hmm. How do you get your work done? You get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> it just likes some furniture. When you saw them every day, you just get used to it. Yeah. So you've been collecting for how long? I started collecting 1996 with the classic watches. And there are some pretty interesting ones here. For example, these enamel dialed watches. What's the story here? I mean, this is a depiction of the Swiss Chronometry Observation Center. Yeah, enamel watches, enamel dial, which right. is very rare mm -hmm. for the Omega in the past. Where exactly did you find it? How do you source all these watches? I can only say I'm lucky. When I saw this enamel dial on the magazine, I said to myself, wow, if yeah. one day I can have it, it's uh, fantastic. Mm. One day I, I got it yeah. and I use it to do the decoration of my museum. When okay. was the museum created? 2006, when I think that I have quite a lot of watches and I think it's time to share to my friend mm -hmm. what I have and I can talk with them about the history of it. Yeah. So I created the Omega Passion Museum. About how many watches would you guess are in the Omega Passion Museum? About 300 watches in the museum. There's Speedmasters from the very beginning all the way to modern Speedmaster. Every single Speedmaster you can think of is here. They all have wings. Rock. The Eagle has wings. For a space and watch nut, it really doesn't get much more exciting than a watch worn on the moon. The Speedmaster wasn't initially developed for spacefaring applications. Instead, it was a racing watch. Fate put the Speedmaster in the right place at the right time to become flight qualified by NASA, and we're all glad it did. It passed the rigorous testing that NASA put it through and ended up as a piece of an astronaut's official kit. 
It's an exceptional chronograph. Got another inch. There you got it. That's a good step. Yep. When Buzz Aldrin wore his Speedmaster on the moon in 1969, it instantly propelled the watch to horological stardom. The moon landing would define the reputation of the watch for the next 50 years and counting. It's that exact historical lore that led Kunapichai to collect Speedmasters. This is a second generation mm -hmm. Speedmaster and used the 321 caliber. Right. What are your thoughts on the new re edition of the 321? Uh, I already have one. Oh. Should have known. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the new Speedmaster, they are very, very nicely done. Very good workmanship. Comparing to the past, I got the history. Mm. The new one, I got the very, very beautiful watches. It's a different watch, fundamentally, as it once was. One represents the history, now the new ones represent an emphasis on craftsmanship. Yeah. In the past, they prevent the anti-magnetic. Mm -hmm by a aluminum cover yeah, to cover change. the caliber. Mm. But nowadays, because of they change some of the parts, mm -hmm. so that now the anti-magnetic field is from the caliber itself. Mm -hmm. So this is like a new technology mm. put into the classic watches. Right. Make the classic watch even more interesting. Yeah. This is my, my, my thinking. So then this guy here is from one of the mission series. Did you collect them individually or you got the whole set? I got it one by one. You collected each one yes. individually. In 1997, Omega created the Speedmaster Missions set to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the Speedmaster. Each watch in the set featured a mission patch from NASA's famous Apollo program, 22 in total. The 23rd watch in the lineup was made to resemble the original reference CK2915. A limited number of the sets were released, but the patch watches were also available separately. The first watch that I wanted to have is the Apollo 13 because of the history of it mm -hmm. and the, the design. It looked very, very beautiful. Mm. And when I got this one, then I tried to find another and unbelievable one day I can get all of them that 22 is watches. insane. Yes. Every mission patch on the sub dial. Some of them want to sell me the, the whole bag. Yeah. But at that time, I don't have enough money to buy it. Yeah. So uh, I collect it one by one. And finally, I got them all. Every Speedmaster that's kind of part of the Omega lore, legendary Speedmasters, you have an example. For instance, this combination right here. This is mm -hmm. the original one. Yeah. They uh, gave it to the staff when the Apollo 11 mm -hmm. touched the moon. Yeah. And then after that, they have this one come out. So I get them both. So the original and the 50th anniversary yeah. side by side. It's like you can compare it, the workmanship mm -hmm. and about the history of it. And which one do you prefer design wise? Which one speaks to you? should be the original one mm. because this is the first one. The Omega fan love the Speedmaster. We collect Speedmaster because of Apollo 11. So this one should be the one. Yeah, this is kind of the centerpiece of your collection, yeah? Yeah. The one watch. Yeah. That kind of sums it up and ties it together. Yes. So that's all on kind of the tool watch end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. On the other end of the spectrum, is this Omega Dynamic? And there's something interesting at six o'clock. This watch is, I think, the only model that Omega did limited edition for Thailand market. This is for the Loyal Irrigation Department of Thailand for its uh, 100 years anniversary. A watch made to honor a government agency responsible for irrigation might seem odd, but context is important here. The agricultural sector employs almost half of Thailand's total workforce. It's the second largest rice exporter in the world, at $3.7 billion worth of rice leaving the country in 2020. And that number is expected to climb. King Chula Longkon established the Canals Department in 1902, and that eventually became the modern-day Royal Irrigation Department. Water is important to every aspect of national development, but it's particularly important to farmers, the backbone of Thailand's economy. I've never seen anything like this 
you know, an irrigation department. Super, super interesting. Yeah. And exactly. how did you find it? When the department reached their anniversary, mm -hmm. some more publication in the magazine that uh -huh. uh, they're gonna have 200 watches limited edition. So I get this one brand new. And this one is another model. But at that time, I only have money for one. Mm. So this one, I just got it two years ago. Wow, so yeah. you went back in time and found yeah, it. This is about 20 years different. How much time do you spend researching and finding new things to add to the museum? In the past, I spent quite a lot of time, but nowadays it's very busy time. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, only spending money to buy, <laughs> which is not fun at all. <laughs> In the past, it's more fun. Right, right. What speaks to you specifically about Omega? You're all about Omega. All the watches are beautiful. Mm -hmm. They are nicely designed. But for the Omega, not only the design, they have the history. Mm -hmm. If you talk about Speedmaster, you are talking about right history. Mm -hmm. Mankind go up there yeah. to the moon. Incredible. Yeah, incredible. Collecting Omega, not only collecting the watches, you have the story behind. Well, thank you for taking the time here. This is uh, incredible to see this. And I, I, I want to emphasize how difficult it is to wrap my head around the fact that I'm inside of an office, inside of a factory, and essentially at a museum that rivals anything I've ever seen put on by manufacturers. It's just a, incredible to imagine that this exists. So thank you for doing this. Thank you. I fell in love with watches again during my time in Thailand. It's impossible to become jaded or cynical about the hobby when you consider the infectious passion of collectors like Kun M, Andy, and Kun Apichai. Thailand is known for its intensity, blistering tropical heat, food so spicy it's euphoric, beaches so beautiful you think they're fake, and of course the ever-present Thai smile. There's an expression here, sabai sabai. And it means something like, take it easy, life is short, relax, see the good in things. And after my time here, that's exactly the attitude I'm applying to watches. <laughs> We could all learn something from the Thai way of life, and especially the Thai way of enjoying watches. And that means passion first. But this is only the beginning, the first stop on a world tour full of watches in the wild.